All right. Are we there? Ma Africa Molweni. Um I trust that I'm online and I trust that you guys are here with me. I am just looking for my light and the light in paper. Okay. Well, I'm going to um, salute all my ancestors anyways. Ngoma. I greet you all in the loving spirit of our father. O Mangaliso Sobukwe, long live. Long live the spirit of our great ancestor, Ungwame Nkuma, long live. Long live the spirit of the Lion of Azania, Udatu Zef Mbutubink, long live. Long live the spirit of Salvi Ngendane, long live. Long live the spirit of Bele Demaswai, long live. Molwen Ma Africa, sons and daughters of Azania, and it is a great pleasure to be here. Um, there will be space for interaction at the end of my presentation. I see you guys are there and very chatty. Please don't distract me. <laughs> um, today we're speaking about reclaiming African beauty. And I think the best way to start this um since this has been my journey anyways um the black girl hey black girl hey hey black girl with any issues throw away your box of tissues the time has come for emancipation sing your song in celebration hey black girl nge hips nempundu hey hey black girl nge hips nempundu our same <laughs> you guys are distracting me there in the comments. I was saying that in Dagaya Mandla, Benzela Ubamba Isandla. No one works those hips the way that you do. I found that it's true. These hips are for keeps. I found that they seem to lure all the boys. Hey, black girl, get hips nempundu. Kama kasha ako stand up and be counted. Hey, hey, black girl with any issues. Throw away your box of tissues. The time has come for emancipation. Sing your song in celebration. Hey, blue, 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 black girl. Let it go, your fear of yellows and reds and greens. Where have you been, my sister? Their sentence was lean for their miscalculation of her celebration of being my creation. In Zigele blue, blue, black, kawek as in DTA. Hey, hey, black girl with any issues, throw away your box of tissues. The time has come for emancipation. Sing your song in celebration. Hey, black girl, get in his neck growth. Hey, hey, black girl, get in his neck growth. Zieke, zinake, gamandla ako. Curled, locked and entwined, it's divine, the message in our hair. How will you know if you don't let it show that baby it's on, Mujiba is born. Hey, black girl, I'm a Afro puff, stretch your staff, show them this, it's not a bluff, DTA. Hey, black girl, with any issues, throw away your box of tissues. The time has come for emancipation, sing your song in celebration. Okay, so um, I must remember what year it was, but oh, 2016, we woke up to the news of an incident at Pretoria Girls High School. So I'm on line now, Zuleika Patel. Zuleika Patel was born 2002, is a South African activist. She became a symbol of the fight against Pretoria Girls High School's policy regarding black girls' hair in 2016 at the age of 13. 
She and her classmates held a demonstration that led not only a change in school policy, but also an inquiry into allegations of racism at the school. She is quoted as saying, asking me to change my hair is like asking me to erase my blackness. So um, the then minister of um, education, I think it's still the same one now, Mam uh, Enji Mutaka went on to SAFM to say that she didn't think that there was anything controversial about the policy of Pretoria Girls High. So um, on September 1st, 2016, I had words. <laughs> um, if you'd like to follow um, my WordPress account, Nziki Mazwai WordPress, and the article is called Black Hair Police. I know some people are control freaks like me. So this is like in church when they give you the reading for the Bible. It's Black Hair Police, um, September 1, 2016, Ziki Mazwai, Word Press. Okay. I found the minister's statement regarding black hair in schools disappointing. Minister Angie Mutecha said there was nothing controversial about the Pretoria Girls High School hair policy on SAFM AM Live. I found it sad that a leader could not unpack this highly political issue. Let me start by saying, this is not a petty hair issue. This is an issue of identity. I wonder if people are aware that black hair grows out into an afro naturally. We black people are not born with hair which many women, with the hair that many women have weaved or wigged onto their heads. There are many deeply racist reasons that black women have a history of straightening their hair. We come from a past where being black and anything that came with the black experience was demonized, especially as dark skinned sisters. White people who have always been in control of the media and of all streams of information have set a benchmark of long straight hair being termed beauty. We have never been exposed to natural African attributes being termed as beautiful. We have even had to claim the beauty of our bodies with coming up with names like bootylicious and thick. These words did not just come about. They are an expression of the black girl saying, I am beautiful too. Our hair has been under attack for centuries. We are the only race in the entire world that has hair like ours. It is what makes us unique. I do not see white people being ashamed of their hair. I do not see Indians being ashamed of their hair. So why should the black child be ashamed of their hair? Every day, the white child gets out of bed, looks in the mirror and sees someone perfect because the world has told the white child she is perfect. When the black child gets up every day, she looks in the mirror and has to straighten her hair and wish they were a little bit lighter skinned because the world has told the black child that long wavy hair and fair skin is beauty. Why is it that the white child can wake up, tie their hair in a ponytail and go to school and they are fine, but the black child has to change their natural hair to suit school regulations? What are we teaching the black child? Why is it that we black people are always trying to fix ourselves to look white in a black dominated country? Let me say that again. Why is it that we black people are always trying to fix ourselves to look like whites in a black dominated country? We understand if the school was saying no fancy hairstyles at school, that's understandable. But our natural hair is not a fancy hairstyle and it is not our fault that our hair is unapologetically and wildly beautiful. Why would you want to rob the black child of their right to be black and the right to feel beautiful in their own hair and skin? Having straight hair is also perceived as being more sophisticated. It has even affected our ability to earn income. You are believed to be rich, if you have a nice weave, the less African you look, the richer you seem. Are these not stereotypes we ought to be breaking down? 
If ANC was more pan-Africanist, we would be in a better position because we would have leaders who know that everything starts with self-love and self-belief. But unfortunately, we have apologists, grown-ups who listen to clever whites and follow their narrative. If you were so concerned about seeing the blackboard, are you going to put a height policy on the tall pupils too? We should not even be having this debate. This was a simple issue of setting the record straight by the minister. Every black child has the right to be black. Leave the children's hair alone. And Madam Minister, it is controversial that a black child can't adorn their natural hair in a black country. Sure, so guys, let's unpack that, you know, because... I think that um, Mum and G's experienced the same kind of hardships that we've experienced as dark-skinned girls, um, where we have been made to feel like what we look like is not enough and we must aspire to be something else. I mean, I've even seen in how they even worked on her image and her makeup and her weaves and stuff. And what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us that sophistication is is measured by how white you look so let's 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 unpack how we got there because a lot of black women say that they put on weaves by choice and i'm like there's no way that this is by choice from when we were young we are socialized with cinderella stories um snow white cinderella the fairy princess stories you know um this is how we all be wanted to be uh, to get married in the white dress and stuff because we're reading these kind of stories so we read when we're young we're like oh i also want to be a fairy princess oh wow look at the long blonde hair you know i have memories of being young and putting on jerseys or like scarves on our heads and like flicking it because that was how you look like a fairy princess. And I see that it's even evolved even more now on our TV screens where our actresses, you know, on TV, they always have to wear weaves. What is that? Um, what is it that we have to put on something, you know? Um, I remember also when we were young, there'd be Edwards L'Oreal having that because I'm beautiful, because I'm beautiful and flicking their hair. And I think on a subconscious level, black girls kept watching that and realized that, okay, if that's beauty, uh, that means my hair is not beautiful, right? This is, this is just logically how a human being would operate. So there were no adverts there were no l'oreal adverts with afros and intricate african hairstyles that were like because i'm beautiful and then we have our cowrie shells we have our because i'm beautiful we've never had that message instilled in us so in as much as i always say that black women are the only race in the entire world who are wearing other people's hair other people's hair guys you're wearing other people's body parts. You're wearing somebody else's body part. Like, I don't know how much I can clarify that. You're wearing somebody else's body part. Okay, so black women are the only race in the world who are wearing other people's hair. But then, in all fairness, black women are the only race in the world who have had a war waged upon their hair. We are the only women in the world where we've been told our hair is ugly, uh, dreadlocks, uh, we've had to straighten it. You know, we see adverts from the apartheid era where they were selling soap and this advert will be like, um, it'll show a picture of a very dark skinned person and then the person who's using soap is becoming whiter and whiter and whiter. <laughs> so... We as Africans need to be conscious of the fact that there are systems in place built to make us hate ourselves. Imagine we get the TV and there's this thing where they're telling you you're dirty, you're dirty, um, you need to wash. 
and become more white to be more acceptable. And you know what? The human spirit is very fragile. It's very sensitive. Um, we are like a computer brain. Our brains are like a computer. So if you keep instilling a certain message in us, we're going to believe it. And that is exactly what happened. You know, uh, white people came and they colonized us. Because when you look at the history of black hair, when you, you, you see pictures of the intricate hairstyles, you know, women are always saying that, no, it's for variety. And I'm like, no, but that's impossible because there's more variety when your hair is natural. If we all had to cut our hair, all of us cut our hair, Ibengag, all of us would look unique. It, there's not even one hairstyle that would be the same, even though we're all in one, one hairstyle. However, with the weave, you guys have got quite a standard thing going. So it's not a good enough excuse to be like, it's for variety. It's not for variety. You're making up stories. You're making up more things to, to detract from the fact that this was a psychological warfare that was embarked upon you as a black woman. So fine, before we used to have a culture of, you know, this, the hair issue is so deep that it's, it's broken our relationship as sisters. Um, if you remember, we used to braid our hair and there was a whole culture around beautifying. If you look at ancient um, African pictures, you can see that the, our hair was an art form. And if our hair was an art form, then it means our hair was a spiritual process. And in that spiritual process, um, that was the bonding of women and the bonding of sisterhood. That's how we, 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 we. We, we, yeah, our sisterhood. Whereas I find with the weave, it's very divisive. Um, the ones with the weaves suddenly feel better than the ones that don't have weave, and suddenly they're richer, and suddenly they've got another bounce that's sort of, you know, and it kind of killed the sisterhood of black women because now we're divided because. You want to be white and you want to separate yourself from the rest of us. So, okay, cool. Um, we come from a background where we have been taught to hate ourselves. Um, oh, yeah, we were looking at Afri ancient African hairstyles. You can see that it was an art form. It, you know, we were into doing our hair and beautifying ourselves. It's our thing. Um... Then Abelung Bafiga, and then they were quite violent in how they took our land and dispossessed us of our, uh, our our culture and our language. When you read these books about the conquering of Africa, you you can see that there was a clear mandate to break the culture of black people because um, I don't know I don't I don't know kind of who said it, but they were like. These people are so united and so together that the only way that we're going to break them is if we break their culture and their spirituality, right? So, I, because guys they will study us and they will strategize, they will project, they will have it on a Microsoft pinpoint what what on how they're going to take over. Rona, we just talk a lot. Uh, we're having these WhatsApp groups where we're posting, uh, lamenting about Africa, whatever. That's not what Abelung are doing. Abelung, Bona, <laughs> they're busy with the PowerPoint presentations. And then they're like, oh, okay, cool. Let's create an education system that uh, these people have to speak English. They have to speak Afrikaans. That way we're killing their language. This is part of the system. So now here we are, because there was a system that was created to ensure that I lose my language, right? Because while we're born, WhatsApp group and having lockdown house parties, ne? <laughs> Abilung creates systems. They create systems. So um, even in the media, the media is part of their propaganda systems where they, they push the narratives that they want. As I said earlier on, they would have soap adverts 
that can where you can wash away your darkness and you can be fair and you can look like a white person and when you have look like a white person you're more palatable for for jobs you know you're not like the other blacks you're different um you can speak you you speak so well right so you pitch up there with your weave and you speak so well and you are perfect for the ceo position because you know what you don't remind them of that soir très fort. You don't remind them. You don't threaten them. You are like them. Um, there is another. Uh, there, there's a there's a, um, another piece I wrote on the same WordPress uh, account. It's called "Not Just Hair," and I just want to go into a few pointers, some more into this. I hope I'm not boring you guys. So, okay, now we've talked about how th even the jobs, I mean, do you remember the pencil test? Uh, they put a pencil in your hair. If the, the, hair, if the pencil stuck in there, you're too much of a kaffir. kaffir. If the, the, the pencil thingy, then perfect, you can get a job. Um, I always feel a bit dodge about colored people because they're neither here nor there, but they want to be there for the benefits. Um, I saw they were saying that um, they felt left out by 94 and what what but I, I'm like yeah but when the pencil test was going on and you were passing you were cool with being white so it's a bit tricky so anyways but I do believe that we're all black <laughs> but I'm like guys please pick your struggle and choose your side and be loyal to the side so um, yeah we do come from a history where you got jobs because of what you look like. I mean, even in Cape Town, you will see, even not even just Cape Town, in South Africa, you'll see that the, the bottom jobs are reserved for the blacks, the middle jobs are reserved for the coloreds, and then the top jobs are reserved for whites, right? So it did, you did get jobs according to how fair and how straight your hair was. So obviously that's very damaging for a black woman. Because you wake up, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm dark-skinned. What am I going to do? Okay, skin lightener, whatever. Okay, what am I going to do? Okay, weave my hair. Oh, that's why when we're, we're black women don't have uh, weaves on, they're like, I'm having a bad hair day. What the fuck is that, ladies? Your natural hair is a bad hair day. What? So, um, yo, man, we need to recognize that there were systems in place that have made us hate ourselves what are the systems that we can put in place now that can make us love ourselves how do we start now erasing the type of celebrities that white people are giving us on media 24 because white people i miss basipa the the weave ones who twang whatever how do we change that how do we use our voice and be like no we want natural hair on tv and we want to see more dark-skinned um uh, uh, faces because when we go to Chisanyamas, when we go to church, when we go to social gatherings, we see people that look like us. We don't see people that look like Beyonce. I'm sorry, but that takes a lot of work. Even for Beyonce to look like Beyonce, it takes a lot of work. Why is the most successful black woman having to um, look like a white to be the most successful black woman? Like, what's up with that? Why do we not have black people that look black, that dress in an African manner, that we label as black excellence? Like, what's happening? Why is all our black excellence in suits? Even the, I've got an issue with men and um, how they... I don't know how much time I've been going on there. It doesn't even say here. The issue with men. Why are men afraid of their own hair? What's that about? Um, you know, I don't want to reference the Bible, but I know the Bible's stories are from taken from African myths and legends. So they're ours anyways, even though they've been distorted with. So there's a story of Samson and the story of Samson speaks about the spirituality and the strength that your hair carries. So why is it that men are cutting off all their power? What are you scared of? Why are you scared of your own image in your own hair, brothers? 
What's up with that? And what's up with men, the more successful they get, then the more likely they are to date somebody who's light-skinned with a weave. What is, I, you know, can we unpack that and, and speak about how men are also contributing to the self-hate and black women hating themselves? Because if I go to a club with a light-skinned person in a weave, she's going to get more attention than I am. Or even if, I mean, even if, flip, no matter how pretty you are, the dark-skinned girl, the light-skinned girl, girl is still going to get more attention. So what's that about in our psychology? And how are we going to create systems that reverse that kind of psychology? Because, again, I'm saying systems were created to... to to make us hate ourselves. Okay, I'm seeing such a, a random, why did you paint your nails? Uh, don't even talk about this sister. <laughs> you see, ignorance. Black women have always beautified themselves. When you go to stories of ancient Egypt and pictures, you will see black women have always um, beautified themselves. Um, when you when you actually i'm so worried it's saying my storage is almost full i hope it doesn't cut our thingy uh the costa makeup i'm at Kogoza. and when you see them wearing the orange when you look at kenya when you just look at africa we've always used makeup we've always adorned ourselves what is unfortunate with us is that we're following the western makeup where now people are looking like crazy Barbie doll, what? I don't know what. With the eyelashes that do this and then the lips that are like pouting and this is some crazy shit going on in the black girl's face right now. Like, let's be honest about it. When we go to like Tasha's or like go somewhere fancy for a meal, the white women, the Indian women, the Chinese women look like themselves, but the black girls are in costume uh you know i was this one girl who was like yo the one time i was so embarrassed i went to the bathroom and there was a white girl and she just got to the mirror and she was just like oh, okay i'm done and then i looked at myself in the mirror and i had a weave and i had all these things on my face and i was like what's going on with me so black girls and i'm so glad this is happening during lockdown because We've had an opportunity to be at home the whole time, so we haven't really had to put on wigs and stuff. We've sensed we've been so comfortable and been ourselves. Um, I'm hoping that we can be brave enough to... Uh... Hi, Pazma UWC. Do you still have that f awesome female president? Yes, like... Um, okay, so guys, I said you must stop distracting me. We're talking about African beauty, right? Because the black girl has been traumatized, has been hugely traumatized. My other issue with the weave, ne, is that imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Like, when I see in the street somebody in braids and beads, I'm like, oh, that's Nziki Mazwahi style, <laughs> you know? And I'm just like, oh, that's my influence. Do you realize that black women, that's the feeling you're giving white women all the time? All the time. You just, they just like, oh, the black girls want to look like us. Yeah, well, you girls want to look like us. And obviously, it looks like you want to look like them because you've got their, their hair, guys. How can you go fetch somebody else's body part? Like, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Collectively, as a black nation, it's embarrassing. So for me, I'm like, the whole imitation thing takes away a lot of power from you. Um, if you're going to imitate, you must just know that it takes a lot of power. I've spoken, I've spoken about the socialization um, issue. You'll see all these. They come on the, 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 the paper, not just here. Okay, then sometimes you ladies say, no, all races wear weaves. Yeah, but all races wear weaves with hair that looks like their own hair. It looks like their natural hair, so you can't see that it's a weave. Do you understand? Do you understand the difference where 
you guys are taking a foreign looking thing and putting it on your head and then wanting us to play along with you like come on ladies come on like i don't want to hear that all races wear weave no the other races wear weaves that look like their their own hair so start wearing if you want to wear weaves wear weaves that look like your own hair and enhance that there's a difference between enhancement and imitation okay so then you also sometimes say i am not my hair um yes you are your hair yes you are do you know that a doctor can take one strand of your hair and clone an entire human being another you an entire human being so you are your hair your just one strand is you you are definitely your hair and if you want to quote india Ori, you must note that india Ori, the minute she said i'm not my hair E energy just went zoom because you know what we were like why are you trying to impress abelung we are our freaking hair we are our freaking hair we are the only race in the world that has hair like this this is some kind of divine intervention we must own it like whether the, there's that what's it called some scientific term the helium don don the coil of the dna but that's what our hair does unlike other people's hair we are the original you must understand that we are the first people we were born before the other races therefore we are the original human this is what god meant when god made an african this is what they meant as in a human being abanye are diluted versions of us so please do not undermine the power of your hair i mean for me personally on a personal journey um i had dreadlocks and i was like oh you're naked rocker guys in my youth like big time in 2010 i cut cut my dreadlocks i've never had such bad luck in my life <laughs> i've never had such bad luck in my life um like it was literally samson so the, i think there is a spiritual connection to our hair uh we remember as youngsters our, our our moms were always conscious of telling us to make sure we flush our wear our hair because so we are definitely definitely our hair okay um identity i say if you run away from who you are what is it saying about you who does that make you if you're willing to pay over five thousand rand a month just not to look like yourself what is that saying how are you going to be cl paying close to a hundred thousand a year just because you hate your hair how does that sound healthy <sighs> like guys how does it sound healthy to spend over 5,000 Rand every month just not to look like yourself? That is definitely a, a mental um, thing that we need to work on. Then I speak about the only return of investment that a weave can give you is no hairline. You know, um, there are women in my life where... Um, they say that they were they were weave women last they were weave women of yesterday and they're like you know i wish i'd listened <laughs> they're like i wish i'd listened because if you remember back then you, you guys used to be like oh i think he's such a paid i think he's a paid i think he's a hater and i was like no i wasn't trying to hate i was trying to like so now they have no hairline now they have to wear the wig because they have no hairline so this investment that leaves you so broken and takes away so much still it, it, it scares me it really 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 scares me um i just feel like it's self-destructive and then you keep saying it's my choice i say no sane person would choose 
to spend thousands of rand to burn their scalp and lose their hairline unless some deep emotion was driving that action. So no, it's not just hair. Your spirit is carrying a lot of baggage. Um, it's getting dark now, so I'm trying to... And this light is a bit hectic. Um, can somebody give me a time? Guti, do, do I still continue? Do you guys want to engage? Um, but lastly, there was, uh, just to finish off, uh, on the same WordPress, my WordPress has got some gems. So just go through that. But on 5th of February, 2014, I said 31 ways to fall in love. And these were 31 reasons to go natural. One, you can wash your hair every day if you want to. I mean, guys, can we just talk about the, the stank of the weave? <laughs> like, <laughs> no. Ladies, let's just <laughs> be ourselves. Please, let's just be ourselves. Okay, and then two, you don't come across as trying to be someone you're not. Because really, guys, when you're wearing somebody else's hair, you're coming across like Aus Tembang. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you don't want to come across as some, trying to be someone you're not. You don't see... The thing is about that that worries me about us is that when black... When white people put on features... Uh, Okay, a little bit better. When white people put on our features, the curly hair, the, the nose, they called it a clown. When we put on their hair, we called it beauty. Who's the idiot now, guys? <laughs> like, can we just love ourselves, too? Um, number three, your hairline remains intact. Yeah, natural hair, your hairline remains intact. Four, um... You do not have two types of hair texture on your head. <laughs> Ladies, I think where you've got two types of texture on your head. <laughs> Ladies! Flip. <laughs> and then five, you look like the same person all the time. I don't know how many times we've, we're like, I'm a guillem. <laughs> and then we feel bad because now we're laughing at the person's natural beauty because they set us up. You know what I'm saying? So let's just arrive as ourselves and be like, this is who I am. You're going to deal with it. <laughs> okay. Um, six, you can invest your money into something that yields returns. You can invest your money into something that yields returns. You can't just be consuming your, your income, guys. 5,000, 5,000 every month, 5,000, 5, guys, in the mind, you must... You haven't even built schools. Your children can't even speak their own languages. <laughs> um, seven, whether you're broke or not, it'll never show in your hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eight, when someone compliments your hair, it's actually yours. <laughs> like, when we've got to be like, oh, nice weave. Because I was like, awkward. <laughs> awkward. Okay. Um, nine, vanity makes women competitive. When you're comfortable in your own skin and your hair, you don't see other women as threats. Hmm? Ten, the fact that you accept yourself as you are tells the world that you love yourself. Naturally. Eleven, you don't create beauty. You simply are beauty. You don't have to go stand there and be like, you just arrived. You're like, this is beauty. Uh, I'm naming myself beautiful. It is what it is, guys. You know what I'm saying? It's as simple as that. White people can't come and say, no, no, no. Only these ones are pretty. Only the ones who are light-skinned. And no, we only want that. No, we're going to be like, no, we're the blacks. And in our culture, our beauty is big hips, it's dark skin, it's nappy hair. That's beauty for us. 
So you with your white standard of beauty of small bum and long hair, you can continue in your corner, keep your London. We will keep our African beauty. Okay, uh, 12. There's nobody giggling at the fact that you're flicking hair that isn't yours. Guys, Sanchega, I must tell you, when you do those things, we're like, damn. Because <laughs> it's a little bit juvenile, a little bit young to be doing this with something that's not yours. Okay. Um, you know, natural beauty attracts words like queen and empress, which in turn becomes how the world treats you. I cannot, you know, there's a distinct, like, there's just a difference between the way the world interacts with a slay queen and a soul sister. There's a difference. So, and the slay queen is a something that we've conjured up through white people. So it's not that important, actually. Um, 15, you do not have to buy anything to feel beautiful. You guys have to keep buying, spending 5,000 to feel beautiful. With your own hair, you don't actually need that. Um, you don't attract shallow men who are driven by fashion. You can enjoy water. You can shower, baby. You can swim, babe. <laughs> yeah, that's what you can do with your natural hair. Um, you don't have unrealistic expectations of what you actually look like. You know, it's not stressful. The other time I was watching, one of your faves went on, to, did an Instagram live, and she was so traumatized that she didn't have her fake lashes on. And you could see that, oh, oh my God, what a mess. And I'm just like, oh my God. Oh my God. For fake lashes. <laughs> this is a lot. Okay. Um, it makes you look younger. Natural hair looks younger. It makes you look younger. Your image of beauty is not detected to you by white people. You don't have to keep tapping your head like you have lies. Can I repeat that? You don't have to keep tapping your head like you have lies. It's a bad look, ladies. It's a bad look. You don't have to clean up somebody else's hair around your own house. Because that's not your hair, I guess. But those, the, the hair residues everywhere. You're picking up other people's hair everywhere. Hmm? Okay, so, you don't feel like you're wearing a hat all the time. You are not indirectly being groupy to girls with long, wavy hair. Because that's my main thing. I'm like, why are you being a groupy to whites? Damn. Damn, ladies. You make me feel so, ugh, man. You feel content every time you look in the mirror because you're not obsessed with fixing yourself. 27. Your natural hair is versatile. So you get to play with it. You can twist your hair at night and wake up to a brand new hairstyle in the morning. 28. Natural hair is easy to maintain. Stop lying to yourselves about what, 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 what. It's very easy to maintain. We are gears and jet faggy moisturize. Stop lying. Stop creating stories about, no, I can't make you're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. 30. Natural hair with the right grooming has no competition has no competition in the same way that when you're just your natural beauty you when you're with your natural hair you've got no competition because it's uniquely yours and then finally being the natural you makes people see the real you oh the battery is almost done being the natural you makes you people see the real you not the you that you are dying to be. So black people, can we start dealing with ourselves and who we really, really are? Um, I always say that since it's a system that was created, let's say the bath water is too hot. If the bath water is too hot, then we add cold water. If we're being taught to hate ourselves, then let's be rebellious in loving ourselves. If they taught us that uh, kinky hair is ugly. Let's take out our kinky hair. As kes delele with this kinky hair and see where that takes us. Instead of imitating and then competing with hair that's not even ours and creating a multi-billion industry on our insecurity. 
like again we're the only race in the world that's wearing other people's hair <laughs> okay let me deal with some questions um uh Oh my god, I see haters. Some some hater called Ndinga Aizali is just like taking this very badly. Let me see what he's saying. <laughs> Actually you're speaking too long. Um the issue of makeup and weave does not start with makeup of oh, beauty. Okay, wait. You guys are this is a lot. The issue of beauty does not start with makeup and weaves. Lol, this thing has been there even when we were growing up. Sing a oh, weaves. Yes, when we were growing up, it was still the same white media. I need to, we haven't gone through that process where we control the narrative. Um. Uh. Okay, so guys, like I can see there's a lot of um, interaction that is uh, just speaking amongst yourselves. So thank you so much for joining. Um, I will engage the comments in the comments section because I see that I missed a lot of the talk during the talk. So I will physically answer. Thank you so much for joining Izweletu and long live the spirit of the Pan-Africanist Congress. Long live. Thank you so much for joining me. But <laughs> punting on Ziki. I think my talk went badly. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>